to do with the other quarterbacks that they offer, right? Are they going to take two quarterbacks in the class? I want to go down two different roads. If let's say Brock Glenn and we not knowing anything, not, tr- not trying to assume anything, but let's say he does commit to Florida state in the near future. Do you think it's ultimately just the thing where there's absolutely no chance that Chris Parson is still part of that class or, uh, how would you feel about it if they were to land another quarterback? That uh, so, I, I mean, I like they would legitimately like the way the numbers are probably going to fall with the quarterback room and, and anticipating this is more than likely Jordan Travis's last year. And I think the staff is operating under that assumption, uh, even though he'd have one more year of eligibility left. I think, you know, he's been in college. This will be, I think, fifth, sixth year, uh, fifth year, I think. Um, you, They're okay taking two. And they would have nothing wrong with taking Chris Parson, as I understand it. Like they like Chris. Again, this isn't like an indictment on like not thinking he's a quality player or person. It's just wondering if he has it like to the extent of to to elevate uh, the program as much as Florida State needs it to be elevated right now at that specific position. So like he's your. I had one person, a coach at, at another staff. He's not not at Florida State, but I was just po- trying to pick their brain on. Uh, quarterback recruiting and I'd ask them about Chris Parson. They thought he would be for a power five program like a Florida state caliber, uh, an ideal number two quarterback. And I think that's how the FSU staff feels about him just based on their actions. I think they think he'd be a great number two to have in a class and you see how he develops and maybe does become a starting power five quarterback. Uh, but if you were to get someone like Brock Glenn, I, I think he's kind of the apple of FSU's eye right now. I know it's an old man uh, idiom there, but I, I think he's the guy that Florida state, wants and covets the most right now of any player in the country that they view as attainable. He's from Memphis. There's a lot of ties that this coaching staff, whether it's Mike Norvell, Tony Tokars, uh, Justin Krause, Cooper Williams, small field guys. Like, there's a lot of guys who are at Memphis who have relations, uh, relationships with the uh, Memphis area still and coaches in there. And they're familiar with Brock Glenn. He's someone they liked. I think he just kind of kept, keeps getting better. Uh, the more people see him, the more they watch him in person. He's someone who's like uh, certainly ascending as a recruit, uh, has done well in the Elite 11 regional circuit. So, yeah, if he if he enters the class, Ben, I think what well, I think that would probably ultimately like push Chris out by his own choosing. Uh, but I think Florida State would be okay taking both of them. But I, I think to me, Brock Glenn would be the guy who's like, that's the coup, that's the score. That's the guy that they want to get in the class, and they maybe want to say this, but he would be like the number one on their board of, of them feeling good about that position group, probably over Chris Parson in this recruiting cycle. Yeah, that's uh, that's a lot to break down there. I guess my next question for you then would be, um, the the worry I have about this whole quarterback recruiting cycle is not that they're going after you know. They, they should be going after Brock Glenn's, right? They should be looking into these other quarterbacks with Chris Parson wavering. I mean, it, it's just a part of the game, right? You can't sit there and wait for something to happen. You have to make your own luck in these situations. But if, if you were to say one is more likely than the other, what do you think is more likely, that they have no quarterbacks out of this next recruiting class or that they have two? Oh, that's a good question. Uh I ultimately like don't think they'll end up with two. Like I know they're okay taking two. Um, but. This is hard. Yeah, there's a but. Yeah, it's hard to have two quarterbacks in a class uh, now these days. Uh, I think it's more likely that they'll have zero than than two, and you would have to rely on the transfer portal, which a lot of coaches are okay relying on the quarterback, like the transfer portal for a quarterback. There's some theory that it, it it's probably more advantageous to do that than to try to do homegrown because if someone doesn't start within two years, they're leaving anyways, and you allocated all this practice right. time to it. So. Uh, yeah, I, I think what we're seeing is their way of being aggressive, but kind of in a – it's not passive-aggressive, but like in a passive way of them being aggressive. They're kind of allowing Chris to go ahead and take visits, and if he wants out, like to kind of go out on his own terms while trying to upgrade the position group. I think that either Ricky Collins or Brocklin would be an upgrade while knowing there's a roll of the dice, that they could end up with zero uh, high school recruits, which I don't think is a great look, but I'm also like – I had the conversation with, with – with uh, Josh uh, Newberg uh, just on the phone one day because he was like, you know, you're, you're kind of underselling. He thought I was underselling the potential of not landing a quarterback in this class or, right. or Chris Parson decommitting. My whole theory here, Ben, is like all these guys we're talking about, and I like Brock Glenn, and I think Ricky Collins has a ton of upside. I think Chris Parson's solid. I don't think any of these guys are are job savers for Mike Norvell. Like if we're talking about back to your initial question of this being 2022, uh, 
being a big season for Mike Norvell and the rosters, it's a good enough spot for them to take a step forward. Even if, say, they win seven games and then you go into the, the 2023 campaign, like Brock Glenn's not probably starting as a true freshman to then help you take the next step. So it'd be more optics than anything, which do matter. Uh, but yeah, I don't view anyone that they're currently in for right now as a, a instant impact player or even someone that you can go to boosters and say, hey, like I got this guy who's going to be a surefire, you know, first round draft pick. We just need time. So to me, it's like not that this is inconsequential. Uh, it just it, it would look worse that I think it actually in reality is if you do end up with zero. That being said, you don't want to end up with zero. You want one. I just, I, it doesn't make me lose sleep at night. Like I think it does some people. Does, does that make sense? Yeah, no, it, it does. It's not the end of the world if they don't end up with anyone in this class, because I think, you know, just looking at the Parson uh, FSU relationship specifically, it's, it's kind of like they're in the dating stage right now, but they're flirting with other people, right? You know, FSU is going out there getting drinks with some other quarterbacks. Uh, Chris Parson is going out there talking to Mississippi State. So I, I think there's a clear willingness for on Florida State's part to go out and get those other guys. And that just goes to show you that, like you said, they don't feel like Chris Parson is going to be the end all be all recruitment. You know, it, it's not the end of the world if things don't go the right way or, or if they end up with no one like we're talking about.